These flower shaped crystals, well, these are crystals that I got from, you won't believe it, my own urine. And uh, later on in this video, I'm going to show you how I've actually done this, and then you can also repeat the experiment. It's actually quite easy. Um, the crystals are quite beautiful, and they're in different uh, shapes and forms and also different sizes. And this actually shows uh, that uh, there are a different uh, variety of minerals present in urine, and the different minerals they crystallize out in a different way. And in this video, I'm also going to to show you uh, various imaging techniques that I used uh, to make the crystals appear a little bit different. Well, of course, I have to welcome you. Hi, hello and welcome, Micro Hunter here, and uh, Oliver, as some people also call me. And yes, uh, today I'm going to put another uh, video um, online about the human body, but this time, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, about a um, well, not so quite appetizing topic. However, uh, don't forget one thing: that the fresh urine is actually sterile. It's free of bacteria or should be free of bacteria so we should not feel too disgusted about that let's rather enjoy the beautiful crystal shapes uh, that we see right now we're in bright field so uh, at low magnification as a matter of fact so uh, and uh, here I've uh, now added some polarizing filters and this of course makes the crystals light up uh, bright on a dark background uh, but I think they look do look a little bit fuzzy and unclear the resolution is not uh, quite as high um, so I I switched again the imaging techniques around again and I was experimenting quite around, uh, around a little bit here. Um, and also when you rotate the polarizing filters uh, then you also get uh, slightly different colors. It's actually uh, quite a nice uh, experiment to do to see how um, the background and the colors change when you rotate the filters around. And uh, one other thing that I've uh, done is, is I've um, then later on also something that I would like to encourage you to do is I've also used oblique illumination um, and uh, there uh, the crystals actually start to appear a little bit three-dimensionally it's uh, quite beautiful as well well back to the urine um, there are a whole bunch of minerals besides urea present and, and uh, because of that uh, they actually uh, form different shaped crystals so uh, you, if you look very carefully some of the crystals look flower shaped others are a little bit more box shaped and square in nature and this has to do something a little bit uh, with the chemical structure of the individual molecules and how they arrange this, for example, is a high, very high, at very high magnification, and at the center of the crystal, what you see is you see this little dot. And this is actually the place where the crystal uh, crystal started to form. Usually, there's some kind of an impurity there. It could be maybe a small amount of dust, and this uh, acted as a crystallization seed. And this is the place where the more and more molecules started to accumulate and build uh, this flower-shaped crystal, um, and as it grew. And uh, this is uh, something that I've seen in uh, several different crystals, even here. Um, a different uh, uh, shaped uh, crystal but even this one has a little uh, center uh, where crystallization started and then the crystal started to grow um, outwards. Here we are now in phase contrast um, and uh, this actually is very typical because it shows that the crystals uh, they have seem to have some kind of a bright halo around them. This is a typical uh, phase contrast phenomenon uh, that you see uh, quite uh, quite frequently. Usually uh, right now I was um, uh, magnifying around with my 10 times and 40 times of objective. I love this one here. Uh, I call this sunrise at the moon. I was simply yeah, illuminating it from one side and it almost looks like the sun is rising on the moon um, and the individual craters, well these are the little uh, crystals here. Well this is now oblique illumination, that's my favorite one. Um, very easy to do, um, I made a separate video on this as well. And here the crystals, uh, they look a little bit three-dimensional because the light comes from one side. And uh, what I have done is, is I've simply covered um, half uh, um, of uh, the, the condenser and here right now we see how the crystals are dissolving water I added a little bit of water again and when the, basically the light comes from one side then it appears to cast a shadow and this gives a little bit this three-dimensional um, appearance and uh, yeah uh, this is also a little bit in time lapse uh, so to increase the speed a little bit here and to see how the crystal dissolves um, when you add again uh, some water it's uh, quite fascinating to see also some kind of movement and uh, and something like this uh, going on as well and uh, sometimes uh, the um, water is started to evaporate uh, even before the complete crystal was able to dissolve another reversal 
okay when the water evaporates you slowly have crystals uh, forming again and you can see how they actually start to grow outwards from those crystallization points and then they start to become larger and larger and larger um, as time goes on um, until the whole water is evaporated and then uh, the whole process stops or until the concentration of the substance falls below a certain level um, then this also basically stops yes and this is now the time uh, where I want to thank my patreons and also my supporters of the GoFundMe campaign. Um, I am saving money now for a new microscope as you probably have already heard. I've uh, put the links below. I would be very uh, happy and grateful um, if you are uh, able to support me in, in that respect. And uh, yeah, I think uh, right now I'm just going to show you how I've actually uh, grown these crystals so that you can repeat the experiment at home as well if you want to. Well, of course you need urine. You look, you see it looks very clear. This is a sign that there are very few suspended particles in there and this means actually that uh, there are also few cells because as a matter of fact fresh urine should be actually sterile pretty self-explanatory <laughs> it took a drop of pipette uh, and put uh, some drops of urine directly on a cover glass no not on a cover glass um, I'm gonna work without a cover glass on a microscope slide and I simply allowed it to dry. So no cover glass on top, not necessary. Uh, I do not want that the cover glass uh, kind of interferes with the crystallization process. I kind of tried to spread it around a little bit. Um, I also tried to add some substances like alcohol to break the surface tension, um, but this was totally unnecessary because it worked fine with pure urine um, and the liquid simply spread um, across the whole surface uh, of the um, of the microscope slide and then I simply wait it uh, uh, for it uh, to dry. This took uh, maybe, I don't know, half an hour or an hour, depending a little bit on the humidity um, of the environment. It takes longer or shorter. Um, but um, as the water evaporated, I already saw that essentially some crystals started to form, especially from the sides uh, where the water started to evaporate first. And uh, this uh, could be seen quite easily by holding the slide into the light. And you could see that there was this whitish stuff already on there. And the uh, the crystals were already visible with the unaided eye. So, um, and this is actually then a good place or a good time uh, to directly uh, put it under the microscope uh, and to observe it first at low magnification and then at high magnification. And here we still have a microscope uh, slide which is not completely dried yet or is simply is in the process of drying. And uh, all you have to do is, is experiment around with different urine concentrations. Uh, what you can do is you can add another drop of urine on top of that, which increases the concentration again of the minerals. And then you can experiment around a little bit and also with the temperature, for example, can have an influence here. Yeah, this is basically how I did my oblique illumination. Uh, basically what's possible is you simply take a piece of paper and you cover part um, of the condenser. I simply unmounted the condenser now to show you how this is done. And this is when you see those very nice and beautiful um, structures that almost uh, look three-dimensional because the light actually is coming from the side and therefore it's casting a shadow. It's kind of interesting actually. It looks almost sometimes like the crystal is going downwards and not upwards. It's uh, kind of because it's an optical illusion as a matter of fact and the three-dimensional shape is not the real shape that the crystals look like but it has to do a little bit with the refractive index and how the light is bounced off. So uh, the oblique illumination does not really produce um, or reflect the original shape uh, um, of, of the structure. And this basically was almost it because I want to do another advertisement right now. I would like to also invite you over um, to my Amazon shop and I have now not only got an Amazon shop about microscopy related products uh, from, um, from Amazon.com but also from Amazon Germany.de, Canada, CA, uh, also UK um, and uh, all of those links can be found down in the description um, and so if you're interested in buying microscopy related products products uh, do have a, a look there and if you find any other interesting products that you want me to include um, in the shop then please uh, send me an email and if you want to repeat the experiment uh, and by, by putting urine under the microscope I encourage you please do that and you can also send me pictures uh, and then I will also include them in an upcoming video as a matter of fact uh, a few people already have sent me some pictures um, about their DNA extraction um, of a previous video from several days ago. So that's it. Again, a big thank you to all of the supporters. Um, and uh, um, I would like to say now, uh, happy micro hunting as always. Bye bye. See you around next time.